Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So how you doing guys? Hope you all are doing great so in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was great swordman? This is part 1, and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe. Let's get in the video. Yugao Yuzuki was Kanahagakur no Sato's premier swordsman. Her skill with the sword far exceeded the basic instruction that constituted the minimal training that was bestowed upon the Anbu within whose ranks she is assimilated into. As a member of the Black Ops division of her ninja village, Yugao had been exposed to missions most ninja within the ranks of the village couldn't even fathom. Considering this facet of her life, Yugao was understandably upset when the third Hokage, Hiruzen Siratobi, assigned her to watch over Kanoha's resident troublemaker and pariah, while squad rotation policies were being implemented. The vast majority of Kanoha's adult population was well aware of the fact that Naruto Uzumaki played host and jailer to the most powerful entity known to civilization, as a result of some clever handiwork by the late fourth Hokage Minato Namikis. In a desperate attempt to save the village he was sworn to protect, Minato sacrificed his life in order to contain the Kyubi no Yoko within Naruto. Regrettably, Naruto was seen as a physical representation of the suffering and carnage that was caused when the Kyubi attacked Konoha. As such, many of the villagers indulged in the therapeutic act of destroying the nine-year-old body and spirit to derive some sort of compensation for their losses. It was during one of these therapeutic sessions that Yuga was able to track Naruto being chased by a rot and an inebriated member of Konoha's civilian population. A few short moments earlier, the aforementioned civilian had spotted a less than stealthy orange clad Naruto attempt to take advantage of the food a bakery had discarded after the end of the working day. While Naruto wasn't an aspiring freegan, he knew better than to pass up on an opportunity on some decent quality bread. The unidentified civilian had spotted the village's punching bag in the alleyway that had access to the bakery. Naruto turned around at the sound of a wooden crate being kicked aside and shuddered in fear when he saw a man holding a glass bottle in his hand approach him with a menacing look in his eyes. Dropping the half loaf of bread in his hand, Naruto's eyes scanned the vicinity for anything he could use within easy reach to defend himself. Finding a three-foot-long piece of metal at his side, Naruto decided to take advantage of the drunk's uncoordinated movement and use a swift guerrilla tactic to make an escape. Naruto took a few deep breaths to steady his heart and held the piece of metal in front of him in a form that felt most natural to him. From the rooftops that surrounded the alleyway, Yuga watched with interest as her charge for the night calmed himself and adopted a most peculiar stance with what she assumed was a rudimentary substitute for the sword that was on her person. Yuga made no move to interfere in this volatile situation, as her mission parameters clearly indicated that her presence was not to be discovered unless absolutely crucial. Besides, from her position on the rooftop, with a deft flick of her wrist, she could launch kunai and or shuriken to wound the man giving her charge sufficient time to escape. Naruto had managed to steady his previously panicked state of being and was assessing his options. Naruto was terrified as the man before him was wider than he was tall and possessed a weapon of his own as well in the form of the bottle whose contents he had just consumed. The sheer size of his opponent for the night became more imposing with every echoing step as the man took towards his prey. Naruto backed up into the shadows of the alleyway to create some space between himself and his adversary. Naruto quickly realized this means of action was futile, as the large man continued to consume the space between the two, with each purposeful and swaying stride. Carefully watching the right arm of the man within which the empty bottle lay firmly clasped, Naruto awaited the moment that would allow him to counterattack and hopefully escape this current predicament. As the drunken man readied his charge upon the hapless boy, a cruel smirk graced his features. Continuing upon his charge, the man made towards the boy in an attempt to knock the boy down, with a single devastating blow to the top of his head. Naruto noticed the arc of the man's arm and quickly decided on a course of action. He lunged forwards, surprising his attacker, and sidestepped the man's attack during his brief moment of hesitation. Naruto was well within his attacker's guard and swung his makeshift weapon as viciously as possible upon the man's right ankle, eliciting a stumble and a howl of pain from the man. Naruto didn't stop to survey his success as he bolted away from his assailant, only momentarily slowing down to exchange his weapon for the previously discarded bread loaf. Naruto ran towards his apartment, adrenaline coursing through his veins as he left the man in alley, shouting profanities to his own devices. The experience was surreal and exhilarating for young Naruto, as this marked the first time he was able to escape from such an encounter with both the food he was desperately craving and an injury-free body. Navigating the streets of Konoha as expertly as possible for a nine-year-old, Naruto reached his shoddy apartment mere minutes later. With the mission accomplished, the adrenaline left his body as quickly as it came, and the resulting crash meant that Naruto barely reached the trodden couch in his living quarters before his eyes closed. The prize for surviving the encounter, the half-consumed loaf of bread, lay on the floor temporarily forgotten until breakfast the next morning. 
Bugao reported the night's events to the Hokage as soon as she was able to verify that Naruto had reached his apartment. A small smile graced her features as she watched the boy crash into his couch, falling asleep with a smile of his own plastered firmly onto his face. Upon reaching her commander's office, she relayed the events of the night with unerring detail. It was clear to the aged Hokage that the Anbu agent was particularly proud of how the young boy had stood up for himself using a makeshift sword. The unmistakable hint of pride is what led to the current topic of conversation between the pair. Okage-sama, Yugao spoke reverently, if you would allow it, I would like to teach Naruto the basics of Kenjutsu so that he may be prepared for such situations, if and when the need arises. While his strategy was sound, he was up against a drunken man who had no formal training in any form of combat. The Hokage turned around to face the massive window in his office as he pondered his charge's request. Hiruzen loved the boy dearly and was painfully aware of the mistreatment he was subject to on a daily basis. The idea proposed by Yugao greatly appealed to him until he realized that members of his council, both ninja and civilian, would be in uproar as they learned that the village pariah was being tutored by one of their elite ninjas. The ensuing actions would only cause Naruto more harm than good as more members of the populace might be tempted to cause bodily harm to the child. As the Hokage turned back around to face Yugao, she identified the defeated slump of her commander's shoulder and correctly guessed that she would not be given the affirmative. Yugao Chan, the Hokage began looking into her eyes conveying his thoughts on the matter with a mere address. I understand Hokage-sama, Yugao picked up the signals easily. She chose to continue however. I just wish there was some way to pass on instruction to the boy. The pain was clear in his eyes, if only masked behind his determination. That statement sparked an idea in the Hokage's mind. The problem arose from private tutoring and reallocation of a competent ninja's abilities towards a lost cause in the eyes of both councils, but not the passing on of instruction. Yugao Chan, I want a critical assessment of Naruto's physical abilities and mental capacity to the best of your ability submitted within a week from today. Along with a recommended training program for the boy to compensate for any lacking in either criteria. I cannot have you spend time tutoring the boy as this would be seen in a bad light by the wretched council, but maybe you can pass on your knowledge in written form. Yugao snapped her eyes to meet those of the Hokage. The idea was sound since instilling the fundamentals of combat need not require an active tutor. Naruto could learn from scrolls about adequate exercises, basic kinjutsu, and if he took the matter seriously, he would instill discipline into his life, a value most important for a disciple of kinjutsu. Giving a sharp nod to her commander and a quick salute, Yugao snapped back her mask on and disappeared in a flurry of leaves. The Hokage sighed once again. Sure a great problem was on the verge of being solved, but why did his ninja insist on leaving his office using a leaf shunshin they always left leaves behind in his office? It had been a week since Yugao witnessed Naruto's exploits in the alleyway. It was time for her to give in her report on the matter as assigned to her by her commander. Over the past week, Yugao had been assigned a full-time mission that involved the safety and assessment of the aspiring Kanoha ninja. To the best of her abilities, the Anbu ninja avoided interfering with the daily activities of the boy. However, there was one incident where her skills and expertise were called forth for the sake of Naruto's protection. As Yugao walked towards the Hokage's office from her Anbu base, she recalled the events of that night. Yugao watched Naruto from the shadows on the rooftops as she had been doing for the past five days. Naruto had just received his monthly allowance from the Hokage two days ago, and Naruto decided he would treat himself to his favorite meal ramen. As he returned from a relatively late supper from Raymond Ichiraku, a smiling Naruto decided on taking the scenic route back to his apartment on the outer periphery of the housing complex in the northeastern quadrant of the village. As he passed through the dense foliage that made up a significant portion of this part of the village, he failed to notice the four burly men that had been following him since he passed by Kanoha Stadium. As Naruto passed by the disused Hada clan house far to his right, his pursuers were confident of their revenge as this portion of Kanoha was significantly less populated. However, as soon as they spotted Naruto turn in towards his apartment complex, all four men felt a sharp spike of killing intent wash upon them in a suffocating wave. One of the men, Shinji, turned around to identify the source of this nauseating feeling and promptly soiled his pants at the sight before him. His yell alerted his comrades to his predicament and they pivoted from their spots to a sight that would haunt them for weeks to follow. A sadistically smiling demonic specter was waving a large sword at the men, and upon further realization they noted that the specter was pointing the sword in turn at their respective gentlemen's sausages. With a collective yell, the four men continued down their path towards the main gates of the village in a panicked haste, as far away from the demonic form as possible. Later all four men would all swear that the container of the Kayubi had made a deal with a demon to protect the area around which he lived. Yugao smirked under her cat-patterned mask some part of that story actually held merit. 
Yu Gao had to admit that she indulged herself at that moment, the pleasure she obtained with a sharp burst of killing intent, and a simple Jinjutsu had plastered a smile upon her face for the rest of the week. As Yuga reached the doors that led to the Hokage's office and raised her arm to knock upon, she heard the fatherly voice of her commander beckoning her in. Come on in Yuga-chan invited the Hokage. Yuga stood smartly and patiently as she waited for Hiruzen to finish looking over the last pieces of paperwork for the day. Sanctioning the last mission request and placing the appropriate stamp upon the sheet marking its ranking as a function of difficulty, Hiruzen smiled and patted himself on the back. It was only just past 3 o'clock and he had finished his work for the day and was now about to approve of a training scheme that would potentially change Naruto's life for the better. He waved a hand in front of Yugao to signal that she may begin with her report. Yugao placed the written report into the outstretched arm of the Hokage and continued with her oral report. Naruto Uzumaki is a nine-year-old citizen of Konoha who will be applying to join the Konoha Ninja Academy at the start of the next intake. For his age he seems to be of the appropriate height but is substantially lacking in weight. This is mainly due to the lack of a balanced diet and an inconsistent food intake. After following him around for the past week, I have deduced that he is quite adept with his agility but would require additional strength training during his academic years to be on par with Kiba Inuzuka and Sasuke Chia, his future classmates at the academy. Yugao paused for a moment to ascertain whether the Hokage had any questions after her physical assessment of her target and when she determined otherwise, began recounting what she could about Naruto's mental facilities. Continuing her report, Yugao took a quiet breath before she recounted the rest of her findings. Naruto's reading ability seems to be severely retarded. While he is able to correctly identify all of the items on the Raymond Ichiraku's menu, I believe it is only due to character recognition and memory. AM from the Raymond stand is known to have aided Naruto with his reading ability, limited as they might be. In reference to Naruto's memory, the boy is able to absorb information that appeals to him like a sponge, and his recall of the same is most impressive for a nine-year-old boy with no formal education or parental guidance. Yugao did not stop her report, even as she noticed the downcast look on Hiruzen's face, as she mentioned this last facet concerning Naruto's life. She was well aware of the Hokage's connection towards the boy and his inability to change the dilemma that was Naruto Uzumaki's life due to the politics involved in the situation. Naruto's most impressive characteristic stems from his ability to adopt to any situation wherein he is in a pinch. He is able to ascertain two or three options out of a delicate situation with relative ease, but unfortunately his body cannot cope with the expectations of his plans due to the frailty of his physical condition as well as the superiority of his opponents in the same category. Thank you. The Hokage had expected much the same analysis and was pleasantly pleased to note that the unfortunate living conditions of the boy had not negatively impacted his mental facilities. Hiruzen looked up from the report he had been presented and looked up expectantly at his charge. This was the fun part. So Yuga-chan, what do you have in mind in terms of instruction for Naruto-kun? The Hokage finished. Yuga's eyes lit up at the prospect of being able to administer a toned-down version of her own training schedule, from her Chuanin days on to a fresh academy student. The idea of raising a Kenjutsu master in Kanoha the likes of which had never been seen before was exhilarating. She was certain that if Naruto followed this path with the same level of devotion as she had when she was Chunin, Kanoha would secure a valuable asset to its services, and the prospect of playing such a fundamental role in this development was driving her absolutely giddy. She began to explain her plans for Naruto's development as was outlined in her report. First and foremost, it is important to strengthen his body and improve the boy's speed and stamina. In order to accomplish this, I propose sword swinging and basic physical exercises, as well as running to improve speed and stamina. The finer details of this section of the training regimen are outlined in the report. To supplement his physical training, some light reading about combat strategy will educate him on relevant subject matters, as well as improve his reading ability. There will be no instruction in Kenjutsu Katas until either one of us can determine his physical adequacy. The Hokage wholeheartedly approved of the proposed system. While it was slightly harsh for a boy of his age to be told he was going to have to earn the approval of a mysterious teacher to further his kenjutsu studies, Hiruzen's limited exposure to bijutsu made him realize that discipline was a key element in training with the sword. Hiruzen matched eyes with Yugao and nodded once to show that he approved. Beaming with pride, Yugao looked expectantly at the Hokage and requested a favor. Okage-sama, I would like to donate the bakken that I received from my master to further Naruto's study. The Hokage smiled. A bakken is but a mere piece of wood used to train apprentices in the art of kenjutsu. However, the symbolic significance of the act was not lost on Hirzen. The bakken while inexpensive, could still be used for sparring purposes, even at anbu level, and for Yugao to part with a bakken that her master had presented to her, was indicative of the faith she placed in the boy's hands. 
This Bakken was being passed down from Kanoha's premier swordsman to possibly her first and last student. Pirazin would not deny Yugao the courtesy and Naruto the honor of this transaction, even if the boy would not find out the identity of his master and instructor and the significance of the token for several years to come. Nodding once again in approval, Hirazin waited expectantly. Yugao presented the Hokage with a simple sealing scroll, within which a training schedule and the Bakken were sealed. The Hokage took the scroll from his ninja wordlessly and placed it within one of the drawers in his desk until it could be handed on into Naruto's possession. Yugao bowed slightly and was about to take her leave when Hirazin spoke again. I want the boy to have a normal life, well, as normal for a ninja as possible. I wish that he meets his peers and creates new experiences with new friends and his future genin team. However, after he makes it to Chuanan, I would like to present you with the opportunity to apprentice the boy if you would like. Yugao looked back up from her bow and replied sagely to the Hokage. I would very much like the opportunity Hokage-sama, but it would be necessary for the boy to take up the art in earnest before I can bestow upon him my instruction and knowledge. Very well, replied the Hokage, we shall address this issue when it is time to cross that bridge. Hi Hokage-sama smiling back at the Hokage, Yugao made a quick hand seal and took her leave. The smile on Hiruzen's face quickly vanished as he swore at her departure. Damn it, not again with the leaves. However, the smile returned to his face at the prospect of securing Naruto's safety with this new training regimen. Naruto was not accustomed to having visitors at his apartment. Every month, usually in the first week, a ninja would appear at his doorstep, informing him that the Hokage had summoned him. This was done so that the Hokage could give Naruto his monthly allowance. However, Naruto had already received his allowance for the month of November, and he was sure that if the Hokage was to meet him, he would not arrive so early, he never came to visit Naruto until the late evening. So Naruto was suspicious when he heard a knocking at his door. Three sharp knocks, he noted, definitely ninja he correctly assumed. When Naruto arrived at his door, he found an Anbu ninja standing outside his door. The Hokage is expecting you Naruto-san, said the ninja, and then promptly disappeared in a shunshin. Two visits to the Hokage's office within a space of a week was unusual for Naruto. He wondered if the old man had good news regarding his application to the ninja academy, as it was due to start in a little over two months' time. Naruto went back into his apartment and made himself presentable to the Hokage and then commenced a long walk towards the Hokage Tower. It was times like this that Naruto wondered why he lived so far from the center of the city and then the condition of his wallet reminded him cheap rent. Another blessing that stemmed from this early summons was the lack of people en route to his destination. Naruto was painfully aware of all the pointed glares he received as he strode around the village. He was certain he wasn't deserving of everyone's ire, but since no one was offering an explanation, nor was anyone actively attempting to hide their dislike for him, Naruto decided he would bear the brunt of this attack as nonchalantly as possible. As he reached the Hokage Tower, he craned his neck as far back as required so that he could see the Hokage's office. He closed his eyes for a minute as he recalled the view from the office with unerring detail. He had seen firsthand the amount of work that went into being the Hokage, but that view from the top must surely be worth the pressures of the job. Maybe I should become a Hokage too, Naruto mused to himself as he climbed the spiral staircase through the spine of the building that would eventually lead him to the Hokage's office. As the Hokage's secretary ushered Naruto towards the office, Naruto opened one of the two doors and slid in. With a large smile and a polite wave, Naruto announced his presence to the old man. Good morning Hokage Jiji. You wanted to see me? Naruto-kun, you made it already? Please take a seat, we have much to discuss, said the Hokage as he smiled to see the exuberant boy enter his office and get comfortable on one of the two chairs on the other side of his desk. I'm not in trouble again am I? Naruto asked the old man. I haven't done anything to trouble anyone since our last talk, I promise. Hiruzen laughed lightly at the expense of the confused child in front of him. No Naruto. You aren't in any sort of trouble the Hokage told the boy causing Naruto to breathe a sigh of relief. At least not yet, added Naruto cheekily, causing Hiruzen to laugh once again with a knowing glint in his eye. Hiruzen was well aware of Naruto's prankster abilities, having fallen victim to the boy's schemes on a few occasions himself. As Naruto watched the Hokage get a serious look in his eye, he sat up straight and focused all his attention on the next words that came out of the Hokage's mouth. Hiruzen began with a look that told Naruto not to interrupt until he had finished speaking. I want to start by saying that your application to start your studies in the Ninja Academy has been accepted and you will be starting in the academic year starting in January. There is some paperwork involved in finalizing the details of your entry and you will need to sign a document that my secretary will present to you on your way out. Naruto was ecstatic at the news but maintained his silence as per the unspoken request. Hiruzen was pleased with the boy's reaction. 
Naruto could be brash and outspoken when things were casual, but when it came to business, the boy had an uncanny ability to flip a mental switch and match frequencies with the Hokage. Hiruzen continued the delivery of the news. A lot of young ninja aspirants are trained by their families to gain an advantage in their education, as well as to induct their children into the secret techniques of their respective clans. Well you do not belong to any clan specifically, I thought I would be able to lend a hand in helping with your training schedule. While I cannot personally oversee your training due to the constraints of my job, I would like to provide you with a scroll that should help you with the basics. Physical exercises and basic information that would benefit you before and during the course of your education at the Ninja Academy are outlined in a scroll I have here for you. I will be more than happy to hand over the scrolls to you if you are willing to accept the responsibility of following the instructions within the scroll until completion. Everything within this scroll is compiled for your individual needs, and as this training is exclusive to you, you mustn't share this information with anyone. The famed ninja clans of Konoha do not share their techniques with the others, as the training and techniques are suited best for members of their respective clans. For the same reason, you must do the same. Fortunately for you, a training ground exists near your living quarters, does it not? Naruto simply nodded, positively giddy with excitement and not trusting his voice at the moment. Good, Hiruzen continued, you are free to use that space, but if any other ninja come and request use of the training ground, you must vacate the area as they have priority. Is that understood Naruto-kun? Another nod from Naruto signaled to the Hokage that the message had indeed been received and acknowledged. Do you have any questions, Naruto-kun? Did you really compile a unique training program just for me Hokage Jiji? Naruto had reason to be critical. He had seen the amount of work that was required of the old man on a daily basis, and compounding his pre-existing burden with another chore seemed unlikely. Hiruzen smiled before he replied, I had some help on the matter from one of my ninja, I must admit. Naruto realized that he was not going to glean any information about the identity of his benefactor, and so simply finished with a polite reply. I will follow the training program you have for me, Hokage Jiji. I promise to put all my efforts to meet whatever you ask of me, but on one condition. Hiruzen already knew of the nature of the condition without it being spoken, but let the boy speak it nonetheless. Please convey my thanks to your shinobi Hokage Jiji. I will make you both proud. Naruto finished as he got of his chair and grabbed the contents of the scroll reverently. Hiruzen had unsealed the contents of the scroll as Naruto stood up from his chair to reveal a simple scroll and a bakken with a simple guard. Naruto bowed to the old man before he took his leave, absent-mindedly signing the sheet presented to him by the Hokage's secretary. As it grew quiet within the office, Hiruzen turned to a corner away from his desk and near the still ajar door, and simply said, so what do you think Yuga chan Yuga phased into view with her cat pattern mask affixed to her face, revealing none of her emotions from the corner of the office. I have great expectations of him Hokage-sama. After all, he is part Yuzumaki and part Namakas. We all should. Hiruzen nodded and smiled as Yuga proceeded to walk towards the hallways outside the office, closing the door behind her. Indeed, Hiruzen thought. He is part Yuzumaki and part Namakas. It is just unfortunate that he does not realize the significance of the power that courses through his veins. One day however that will change, when he becomes Chuanin, I will tell him about his lineage, as well as the beast that resides within him. For now, I am just glad he has one more person to look out after him. Thank you, Yuga chan The advantage of residing in the land of fire was the relatively warm winter months. Kanoha rarely saw snowfall, and even the coldest of winter days did not require much warm clothing to be donned. On one of these days, Naruto was seen running laps around the training ground that was closest to his apartment training ground for, he later found out after a conversation with the Hokage. Naruto pleasantly recalled his day after he left the Hokage Tower after receiving his training schedule. Naruto continued walking out of the Hokage Tower with the same dazed look on his face as he cruised the streets of Kanoha on autopilot. Instinct ensured that he did not bump into any of the pedestrians on the street, but the wide berth the citizens of Kanoha gave him in public might have also attributed to his intrusion-free travels. When Naruto was in such a state, his brain inevitably guided him to his safe haven Rayman Ichiraku. Naruto climbed upon one of the counter stools still staring at the contents in his possession. Naruto had briefly opened the scroll after he left the Hokage Tower, but the glare of the sun prevented him from reading any further. So he furled the scroll up and continued his examination of the Bakken. The Bakken intrigued him endlessly, the feel of the wooden sword in his hand, the grind of the guard against his thumb and index finger, and the weight of the Bakken itself were all new sensations to the boy. As Naruto sat on the counter stool, A.M.'s frantically waving arm awoke him from his stupor. A.M.-chan what are you doing here? Naruto asked stupidly. A.M.'s face was graced with a puzzled look as she saw Naruto turn his head from side to side, as realization struck both their faces. 
A.M. realized Naruto was distracted by the items in his hand and did not enter the Raymond stand consciously, and Naruto finally got accustomed to his surroundings and realized where he was. So Naruto-kun, what's so interesting about that scroll that has gotten you in such a daze? A.M. asked Naruto probingly. A.M.-chan. I got this scroll and this Bakken from the Hokage. Naruto realized that he would probably need help with reading the entire scroll, and that A.M. had more than proven herself trustworthy to merit knowing the contents of the scroll and his future training. It's a training regimen to help me prepare for the Ninja Academy. I looked at it briefly and I think I might need your help with reading its contents. Would you mind? Naruto finished. I'd be delighted to Naruto-kun. But let's not study on an empty stomach. First bowl is on the house. How you feeling about pork today? A.M. replied, not even waiting for Naruto's response. Pork was always okay. As A.M. returned moments later with a steaming bowl of pork ramen, she found Naruto back to his usual demeanor scroll and Bakken lying to his right on the counter and chopsticks in hand. I did Akamasu, said Naruto before he began devouring the contents of the bowl. Over the years, A.M. and Tucci had conditioned Naruto to eat more humanely. However, this first bowl of Raymond was attacked with a gusto that A.M. suspected had a lot to do with his eagerness to find out the specifics about his training. Naruto ordered one more portion of Raymond before he and A.M. sat down to read the scroll. As there were no other customers in the Raymond stand at the moment and her father was due to return shortly, A.M. did not think twice about helping Naruto right away. She occupied the seat on his right and unfurled the scroll that sat before her. She placed the scroll in front of Naruto who had moved the second bowl of Raymond off to the other side. Naruto attempted to read the instructions listed in the scroll, but was unsuccessful in completing the list. As Tucci walked in, Naruto took a second attempt at deciphering the words. With a silent wave to the proprietor to acknowledge his presence, Naruto continued to read, this time with some guidance from A.M. In less than half an hour, Naruto had finished reading the scroll section about physical conditioning. Thanking Tucci and, especially, A.M., Naruto paid for his single bowl of Raymond and took his leave from the Raymond stand promising to return soon. As he still had to read the section about his education, and he was acutely aware that the concerned section would require a lot more effort and time. Pacing the periphery of the training field, Naruto reflected back onto the handwriting in the scroll. Naruto had seen both A.M. and Tucci write the specials on the board at the Raymond stand. The handwriting on the scroll was even more flowing and delicate than A.M.'s handwriting this led to Naruto to believe that the ninja that helped the Hokage was most likely a woman as well. Pleased with his deduction and taking one step closer to unmasking the identity of his benefactor, Naruto smiled to himself. He continued pacing himself to ensure he met his self-assigned goals. Today was stamina training, and it was going to be a long day. A few hours later an exhausted and sweat-drenched Naruto returned to his apartment just as the sun was beginning to drop below the Hokage monument, lending ominous shadows upon the faces carved into the mountainside, making the four faces look more menacing than they did during the day. A quick shower later, Naruto donned a fresh set of clothing and began cooking his supper chicken, and rice was on today's menu. He would need to supplement his diet better, the scroll had listed various foods for their specific constituents and the respective benefits of the same towards his physical development. Naruto ate his dinner in a contemplative silence. While his dinners were always eaten in silence due to a lack of companionship, critical thinking and reflection were not often guests during meal times. Naruto had begun reading the second half of the scroll the Hokage had given him. He had had an easier time to read the contents than he previously thought. He had read over a third of the material it was another long list, this time of books, but unlike his physical training, these books were assigned a priority. Naruto would need to meet the Hokage again, as he had no idea where to find these books. As the training program did not list a schedule for his exercises and rather encouraged him to develop his own schedule, Naruto began his first day of training, the previous day, with speed training. Naruto had always been quite quick he recalled several instances where he outran quite a few of the civilians in Konoha and those rare instances when he outpaced young ninja during his prankster escapades. Speed training had been unexpectedly brutal and Naruto had considered it his best attribute. Speed training involved several short sprints and running while making quick directional changes to help improve agility. Naruto had felt the strain in his legs at the end of the day and he had woken up with a dull throb in his calves in the morning. The scroll had highly recommended taking regular breaks within the regimen to help recovery of muscles. Naruto had understood the logic behind that line of reasoning and decided he would have a break every third day. In addition, the scroll had emphasized flexibility and core fitness and suggested that both these aspects be worked on a daily basis. Core strengthening and flexibility was now included into Naruto's nightly ritual, along with his dental hygiene. As Naruto finished his quota of sit-ups and stretching, he prepared himself for bed. He would visit the Hokage tomorrow about the books he would need. The next morning Naruto woke with a smile. 
he would be focusing on strength training today, which meant he would finally have a reason to swing the bakken he received from the Hokage. He decided he would break up his day into two segments completing the physical exercises in the morning and the sword swinging after lunch. Just before noon, Naruto walked up towards the Hokage Tower, slightly apprehensive about the monumental reading list he was about to take on. Waiting patiently until he was summoned inside the Hokage's office, Naruto idly spent the time looking around the office floor. It was completely unexceptional that double doors that led to the Hokage's room were situated in the far end of the hallway, and the only thing between the staircase and the double doors was the secretary's cubicle on the left-hand side of the hallway. Which was currently unoccupied. Naruto sat on a row of chairs that occupied the diagonal wall from the secretary's booth. As the secretary walked out of the Hokage's office, she noticed Naruto sitting on one of the chairs and quickly popped back in. As she came back out again, she motioned to Naruto that the Hokage would see him now. As he walked past her cubicle, Naruto greeted her with a polite Heyo Makoto san Makoto Yamanaka, one the few people Naruto had seen with blonde hair, replied with an equally polite Heyo, and smiled at the boy as he passed. As a former ninja and veteran of the Third Shinobi War, Mikoto was aware of Naruto's status as a Jinchuriki and had a strong inkling about one half of his parentage after all, very few people in Kanoha's past who weren't Yamanakas had blonde hair. Naruto opened the doors to the Hokage's office to see the old man waiting expectantly for him. Siratobi eyed the scroll in Naruto's hand and realized that the boy must have questions regarding some of the material in it. Eheyo, Naruto-kun. What brings you back? Did you miss this old man so much? Siratobi greeted. More than Hokage Jiji. You wish old man. Mikoto-san told me you were missing all the ruckus I would cause pranking people and that I should come in to tell you not to worry and that I am still the same person Naruto smartly countered. Garizan smiled, shifting his many wrinkles as the contours of his face morphed into the happy expression. I take it you have started on your training Naruto-kun? Asked Hiruzen. Naruto beamed. Having a training schedule helped him twofold. For one, it kept him out of trouble with the locals as he did not interact with them much. In addition, training reduced the monotony of his days, significantly keeping his body active had the added bonus of keeping his mind focused. In response to the Hokage's question, Naruto replied, I just started. I have had two sessions, but I have a question about the reading material you've recommended. I am not sure where I can get these books from. Naruto handed the scroll over to the Hokage who looked over the list, whose eyes widened in realization as he recognized a slip in his proposed reading schedule for the boy. Naruto-kun, it seems I have made an oversight. These books can only be accessed by ninja or ninja in training, and so you will only have access to them when you formally begin your education at the ninja academy. I recommend that you focus on your physical training for now. We can organize the books for you once the session starts in January, which is just over a month from now Hiruzen said, realizing his oversight the minute the problem was brought forth. Were you able to read everything by yourself? Hiruzen asked, as he was well aware of Naruto's reading ability as it was outlined in the report Yugao presented. Naruto scratched the back of his neck sheepishly. He had made a promise not to share his training details with anyone else and had almost immediately failed to do so. Nervously, Naruto replied Ano, oh, so you see Naruto faltered, embarrassed by the situation, I don't read very well, so I needed some help. I asked A.M. Chan from the Raymond stand to help. She had been helping me with my reading before and it made sense that I would go to her about this. I know I said I would keep it a secret and I am really sorry I didn't, but A.M. Chan is very trustworthy I assure you, Naruto pleaded for his innocence and A.M.'s quality of character. I trust you Naruto-kun, but let's make sure that we don't let anyone else know all right. Hiruzen said. The Hokage's statement might have ended with a questioning tone, but Naruto knew it was not a request. Naruto nodded to show his assent as he watched the Hokage alight from his chair, bones cracking in protest. Now then Naruto-kun. It is time for lunch and I feel like having barbecue today. Would you care to join me? My treat, said the Hokage as he stretched his arms and legs in preparation for the short walk to the restaurant. I need to find a successor soon. I am getting too old for the hat, mused Hiruzen silently. Naruto flashed a large number of his teeth to show his acceptance of the invite for the meal and walked beside the Hokage, matching the old man's longer stride with quicker strides of his own. The walk to the restaurant was conducted in silence, both men taking in the sights of the empty ninja academy and monolithic Hokage monument. When Hiruzen and Naruto reached the restaurant, they were seated promptly in a corner of the restaurant, as per the Hokage's wishes, and left alone to decide what items they would like to order for the meal. Naruto recognized a lot of the words on the menu as they were all listed on the scroll that the Hokage had given him. Briefly he wondered if all shinobi eat at this establishment, surely the food was nutritious and beneficial towards their own training. 
Naruto glanced around the restaurant to spot any shinobi, but was only able to spot a large man and child from his position in the corner booth, with faint swirls seen on both men's cheeks. Naruto turned back to face the Hokage and asked Naruto if he was ready to order. Naruto replied saying he would have the same thing as the old man. Moments later the waiter arrived, bowing respectfully to the Hokage and giving Naruto a short nod. We will have two portions of the half and half platter and two glasses of water said Hiruzen in response to the unasked question. With a quick jot on the kitchen order token, the waiter retrieved the menus and returned into the kitchen, mentioning that the meals would arrive shortly. Naruto noticed that the large man and child he had spotted earlier were walking over to the booth that the Hokage and himself had occupied. Aheyo, Hokage-sama. Aheyo, Naruto-kun. How are you today? Choza Akimichi asked the seated members of the booth. Aheyo, Choza-san. I'm quite well. Hello, Choji-kun. How are you? Replied the Hokage, startling the young boy that stood behind Choza. V very w well ho Hokage-sama Choji sputtered in response. It was unnerving to have the most powerful man in the village asking a boy with confidence issues a question in such a casual setting. Ah no, Choza-san. How do you know my name? I don't recall meeting you before, questioned Naruto. Naruto was rightfully wary of people who pretended to know him. It was a common trick used to lure him towards a group of people, usually a group that meant him harm. You are right Naruto-kun, we haven't been formally introduced. However, as a member of the Shinobi Council, I am privy to a lot of information, such as that prank you pulled on the coffee shop on the main street just over a month ago. Choza replied. The smirk on his face grew larger as Naruto looked about sheepishly. Hearing his father's statement, Choji shed all his previous shyness and exclaimed, you are that Naruto. Pointing an accusatory finger at the boy in question. But you are just my age, how did you pull off all those pranks? My father has told me quite a bit about you, you are quite brave Naruto san Choji finished. Naruto's embarrassment grew further, indicated by the growing flush on his face. To further his embarrassment, the Hokage pitched an adding, looks like you have an admirer of your work, Naruto kun at this Choji's face flushed to match Naruto's, both boys thoroughly embarrassed while the elders laughed at their expense. Toza spotted his takeaway order being prepared at the counter and decided to take his leave. By your leave Hokage-sama said the clan head as he bowed in respect. The Hokage returned the bow before bidding his goodbye to the father and son duo. Bye Naruto-san said Choji, offering his hand to the startled Naruto. Naruto shook the proffered hand and nodded politely to the Akimichi clan head. That boy is really strong, said Naruto as he turned away from the retreating forms of the Akimichis to face the Hokage. When I shook his hand I could feel the strength of his grip easily. How is he so strong? He can't be much older than I am Naruto wondered loudly. The people of the Akimichi clan are known for their brute strength. Naruto-kun, remember I told you that members of clans teach their children well in advance of joining the ninja academy. I wouldn't be surprised if Joza taught his son a few clan techniques or enhanced his strength through training, replied Hiruzen to Naruto's ponderings. I know Hokage Jiji, but it is one thing to hear it and quite the other to see it. That is someone I will be classmates with and he is already so strong, said Naruto, in awe of the effects of early guidance. By the time we graduate I want to be as strong as him Hokage Jiji. That's quite the task you have set yourself Naruto. Akimichis are generally the strongest people in all of Konoha and rank highly in strength across the entire elemental continent. You should train to enhance your best attribute your speed. Having said that, it would be unwise not to have some semblance of balance between all your physical attributes, Hiruzen sagely replied to Naruto. At this point, the food had arrived and both men dug into their respective meals. I will need to train hard. I have much catching up to do, thought Naruto as he ate the rest of his meal in silencing, savoring the texture and taste of the meat and vegetables. As Hiruzen and Naruto walked back towards the Hokage Tower, a comfortable silence was held between the two men. Hiruzen was pleased to note the positive effect of the day's meeting with the Akimichi on Naruto. The boy had become much more determined since that chance meeting to improve, as was evidenced by the look in his eye, and this proved vital to instill self-belief at this early stage in his training. In addition, Choji might prove to become a friend to Naruto when in the academy, which would be invaluable in the near future to the boy's social development. This is where we part ways, Naruto-kun. Keep training hard and you will see the benefits of your results when you join the academy. If you ever have any doubts, feel free to drop by at my office, said the Hokage, as they reached the path in the road where they would split ways. Reaching into his robes, Hiruzen pulled out a book and handed it over to Naruto. This is a remedial reading book. It is fairly simple to read and should help you significantly. Read this during your downtime. Naruto took the book from the Hokage's hand and said, thanks for the meal and the book, Hokage Jiji. I will train hard indeed, Naruto waved to the Hokage as he turned towards his apartment. After a short rest, he would begin his sword swinging. 
It was well past dusk by the time Naruto had finished his sword swinging exercises, admittedly the delay was brought about as his proposed short rest turned into a fairly lengthy nap. That was all the doing of the scrumptious Barbeck, he had had his fill, and his content stomach had managed to subdue his brain and decided that a nap was in order. After a refreshing shower, Naruto consumed the leftovers of his supper from the previous night, completed his nightly ritual, and promptly fell asleep. Waking up quite late the following morning, Naruto was unhappy to find most of his torso in immense pain. Fortunately for him, there was no training scheduled for today. He would need to shop for groceries today, which meant he would need to go into the village center. As Naruto was making his way back from the grocers, he spotted Choji and his father Choza come out of the hospital. Choji had already seen Naruto and had come jogging towards the boy. Naruto-san, a few of us are planning to play ninja in the park nearby in a little while. Would you care to join us? said Choji, excited at the prospect of making a new friend and adding to his tiny friend circle. Naruto was about to decline the offer on the account of having to store his groceries before they had been left out for too long when Choza beat him to the punch. Naruto-kun, you can keep your groceries at our house while you play. We live right next to this park and it isn't an inconvenience at all, said the large man. Choza was well aware of his son's minute friend group and had recognized Choji's attempt to recruit more people into his circle. Besides, this would benefit both of them. I can't imagine Naruto-kun has very many people his age he can call friends, Choza thought to himself. Delighted at the prospect of spending time with people his age, Naruto politely accepted the Akimichis's offer and followed them. Choji was ecstatic at this latest development and rambled on about the different people he was likely to meet at the park. The park was situated roughly equidistant from the Nara, Akimichi and Yamanaka clan. Naruto had never been near the clan houses before, but he did know it involved large families living together, and so he expected a large house or a collection of houses. When Naruto arrived at the gates of the clan house, he was absolutely gobsmacked at the sheer size of the property. It was unlike anything he had seen before. This is someone's house. Naruto wondered. Choji turned around to see his new friend staring at the enormity of the complex, jaw halfway down to meeting the floor. Naruto-san, is something wrong? Choji asked. He was afraid that the boy would be intimidated by the size of the building. After their meeting the previous day, Choji had asked his father endless questions about Naruto, as he had never seen the boy at the park before. Choji had learned that Naruto had lived alone in the outskirts of the village, closer to the village walls in the northeastern side of Kanoha. Nothing Choji-san. I just it's huge. Naruto exclaimed. You live in there? Your family must be huge. Finished Naruto. Naruto quickly bit his tongue, he hadn't intended to make a comment about the size of the Akimichis, but even he realized that his comment could be construed that way. Fortunately Choji did not see it that way. He was acutely aware that for someone who lived alone for a large part of his life, that the lifestyle of a member of a clan must be completely alien. We have quite a few people in the complex, but if you want to see a truly massive clan complex, you should check out the Nara clan. Maybe we will meet Shikamaru at the park today, he is a Nara you know. Naruto didn't. In fact Naruto did not even know about the significance of hailing from the Nara clan, but realized that as a member of the clan house, he must belong to a huge family as well. After storing his groceries in the Akamichi household, Naruto followed Choji to the park, Choza following the two boys closely behind. Choji and Naruto ask each other many questions. Unfortunately for Choji, Naruto was unable to answer a lot of the questions he had had for him or was unwilling to answer a few. Nonetheless, Choji was not put off by Naruto's evasiveness and was happy to count Naruto as a friend. As they reached the park, Choji dragged a slightly startled Naruto towards the group of children that were just beginning to decide on the groups for the game. Choji introduced Naruto to the other four people that were present at the park Shikamarunara, Ino Yamanaka, Kiba Inuzuka and Sakura Haruno. After the introductions were made, the group split up into two teams, and upon Ino's insistence, a second generation Ino Shikacho was formed leaving Naruto, Kiba and Sakura to form the second team. The objective of the game was to sneak up on a member of the opposing team and tag them on their backs or tag them anywhere on their body with one of the three cardboard shuriken that Ino and Sakura had prepared for each of them. As the children began to separate into their teams, the members of the original Ino Shikacho group had gathered around a tree that offered them a large amount of shade. They always watched their respective children play from the spot, as it was far enough that they were not considered intrusive, but close enough to intercept any trouble. Their children were all heirs to their respective clans, and they were all acutely aware of the debacle that was the botched kidnapping of the Hinata Hyuga. As they watched a new addition to their children's group being introduced, Inachi Yamanaka raised a solitary eyebrow as he identified the boy. As he turned to Choza, he asked, isn't that? Yes, Naruto Uzumaki, finished Choza. You don't mean Inachi began again only to be cut off for a second time. Correct. 
his one and only son, finished Choza. And is that Ayanachi continued, determined to finish a sentence in this conversation for once. A bright orange jumpsuit. Saw him wearing it the other day as well. I have absolutely no idea where he got it. Should be banned for being an eyesore. Thing practically reflects the sunlight back into your eyes, finished Choza, beaming smile on his face as he knew what would follow shortly. God damn it Choza. You always do this. Inachi hated when Choza would finish his sentences. Every so often, the large man would indulge in this pastime to annoy the mind walker in their group. Such was the intimate nature of the relationship between the three men that they were perfectly aware of the other's thoughts, this was the primary reason of the success of the famed trio. Shikaku Nara laughed boisterously at this interaction. He absolutely loved it, as he knew the mind reader was furious at having his own mind read. However, Shikaku knew this was no technique, just plain good old intuition. Should be interesting to see his prankster abilities in motion, finished the Nara clan head. His two friends merely nodded and watched as the two teams split off, proud to see the second generation of Ino Shikacho in action. Naruto and his team, who Kiba had determined should be called Team Kiba, split away from the Ino Shikacho group into their designated space in the park and began the count to the hundred, at which point the game would commence. As Sakura finished the count, she and Kiba split ways and began searching for their opponents. This confused Naruto as he was under the impression that they were a team and thus should be acting like one. Since this was his first time playing the game, Naruto decided he would hide in the shadows and try to determine if there were any effective strategies that could be employed to help him win this game. As Naruto slunk around in the shadows in one of the many trees in the wooded part of the park, he heard Sakura's indignant cry. She had been tagged, and if the obnoxiously shrill victory shout that had shortly pursued was any indication, he guessed that Ino had been the one to tag her out. Two versus three now, thought Naruto. Naruto quickly had to correct himself as Kiba took advantage of Ino's lapse in concentration during her victory dance and tagged her with a precisely thrown shuriken to the girl's side. Ino was delirious that Kiba had tagged her during her gloating session. That's not fair. I wasn't ready yet, said Ino, turning to her teammates in search of support. When she received nothing but looks of pity, she huffed and sat down next to Sakura, verbosely cursing the Inuzuka boy for his treachery, with all the gusto and malice a nine-year-old girl could muster. Kiba had managed to disappear back into the wooded part of the park as the remnants of the Ino Shikacho group redoubled their efforts to find their elusive opponents. Naruto spotted Kiba from his hiding place and quickly came up with a plan. He would bait Choji into giving chase and lead the larger boy towards Kiba's hiding place, from where Kiba could easily tag him, as Choji's attention would be on Naruto. Naruto zipped past Choji as he goaded him to give chase. Choji was startled by the initial burst of pace, but was determined to give chase. Naruto had separated Choji far away from Shikamaru that Choji was unable to heed his teammate's warning to give up the chase. Kiba was able to almost immediately latch onto his teammate's plan and decided to hide himself better so that he did not sabotage the plan. As soon as Naruto passed Kiba's hiding place, he slowed down fractionally to allow the Akamichi to catch up. Seeing the distance between himself and his target get smaller, Choji was filled with focus and his determination led to tunnel vision. All Choji could see was the back of Naruto getting larger and larger as he closed the distance between them. Choji had reduced the gap to a mere two seconds when he suddenly felt a palm on his back. Slowing his run, he turned to see Kiba standing at the very same spot he felt the contact with a cocky grin on his face. Got you, said Kiba, chopping his arm in the air to make a motion of a sword chopping through a body to indicate his victory over Choji. Nice one Naruto-kun, now let's get Shikamaru and win this thing, finished the boy as he made his way towards the still-dazed Akamichi and began plotting Shikamaru's eventual loss. After having made their plan, Naruto and Kiba split off and began to search for Shikamaru. Shikamaru was acutely aware of the ploy to trap his friend as soon as he saw Naruto lead Choji away from him and towards the part of the park that was more densely packed with trees than the others. The watchful eyes of the fathers in attendance had spotted Naruto's plan as soon as Kiba had. Impressive, said Shikaku. Naruto had planned it to perfection from startling the Akamichi boy into giving chase to the slowing down towards the end to allow the boy to catch up and lose focus of his surroundings. I know I should be rooting for my boy, but Naruto-kun pulled of a great team move for a team that showed no indication of wanting to work together, said Choza. I do believe this is Naruto-kun's first time playing with the kids, but he was able to come up with an effective plan that played to Kiba's strength his speed, Inachi finished the analysis. Well, if they are going to work together as a team, let's see how they are going to outsmart Mr. Smarty Pants out there, said Choza, anticipating the final showdown. Naruto's introduction to this group certainly made things more interesting. Usually, sessions of ninja just involved Kiba bulldozing through the opposition with speed. I am interested too, but Kiba should be smart enough to realize that Shikamaru won't fall for the same plan, said Shikaku. 
He was mightily proud of his son who showed significant intellect even at such a young age. Naruto circled around the wooded area so as to allow himself to come out and attack Shikamaru from as close to his blind spot as possible. Shikamaru had wisely chosen to keep the open part of the park to his back and focus his energies on locating his opponents, who were surely hiding in the wooded region. Deciding that he was sufficiently close to his target, Naruto sprinted out of his hiding place as quickly and quietly as possible in an effort to tag Shikamaru. With seconds to spare, Shikamaru spotted a blur of orange appear in his peripheral vision and turned to face his opponent. Shikamaru was quite surprised to see the pace exhibited by the boy. Shikamaru had met almost all of the children his age that hailed from ninja backgrounds and had gauged some aspect of their skill whilst playing with them. Shikamaru had never seen Naruto before, but was sure he was almost as fast as Kiba, the fastest member of their group, closely followed by the reclusive Sasuke Chiha. However, if Shikamaru was surprised by Naruto's pace he was absolutely caught off guard by his shuriken throwing skills. Naruto had all three of his cardboard shuriken to spare and launched them with all his might towards the Nara boy. By the time Shikamaru had turned to face his blonde opponent, Naruto had already thrown his shuriken. To his abject horror and Shikamaru's complete surprise, not a single one of the thrown projectiles landed within a five-foot radius of the intended target. Shikamaru quickly gathered his wits along with his own set of shuriken and launched them at the yellow-haired boy. Naruto was able to dodge the first shuriken that was thrown at him, but the remaining two shuriken struck the boy. Naruto had been tagged and was out of the game, but Shikamaru quickly followed. As soon as Shikamaru had thrown his own set of shuriken, Kiba had launched his remaining two towards the Nara boy, who created a new blind spot that conveniently suited the Inuzuka. One of the shuriken struck Shikamaru on his back, and the other grazed his right leg. Kiba, the sole survivor of the winning team, burst into victorious yelps as he ran towards Naruto to celebrate. Sakura quickly joined the impromptu celebrations, and soon the six children huddled together near a tree close to the swing, set to talk about their respective days. Playing the bait twice in two big plays. That Naruto sure is selfless. I wonder if Kiba realizes this, said Inachi. Naruto was able to eliminate the advantage of teamwork by removing Choji from the equation and then set up Shikamaru's loss. Not bad. I just hope he comes up with better tactics when it's time to be using actual shuriken. His kamikaze tactics might get him into a lot of trouble later on, like when it's time to use real shuriken and not ones made out of cardboard, added Shikaku. For now, it's just good to know he will have a few good friends, finished Choza. The two other men nodded their heads in agreement as they watched Kiba reenact the culmination of their recently finished game with some added theatrix. As Kiba sat down after his reenactment, Shikamaru spoke up. Naruto-san, how come I have never seen you at the park before? Most of the kids our age are usually here all the time. Ah, you see, I live very far from here and barely venture into this side of the village. To be honest, I didn't even know about this park. Rather, I did not know that this is where you guys come to play. In fact, if not for Choji-san here, I wouldn't have even been here, replied Naruto. Naruto-san, please call me Choji. The polite honorific sounds weird. No one in this group uses them, said Choji. Naruto nodded and said, as long as you drop the honorific as well. You know Naruto, if you were able to throw those shuriken at me correctly, you would have gotten me tagged for sure. Quite frankly though, your throwing action made it seem like you've never thrown a cardboard or practice shuriken before. Do you not play with the other kids or your parents? Analyzed Shikamaru. As the other four kids turned to Naruto for an answer, they were met with silence. Naruto looked around the faces of the children in the group and it was only when he reached Choji's face that he realized none of them knew of his situation. Doji had guessed from the information that he got from his father that Naruto was probably an orphan of civilian parents who were caught in the destruction rod upon Konoha all those years ago during the Kayubi attack. It made sense to Choji as the timeline seemed to fit as well as the lack of adoption from any of the shinobi families that might have been close to Naruto's parents had they been ninja themselves. Naruto turned his head downwards in sadness but decided to share his situation with these people. With any luck, these people would become friends of his he had already considered the friendly Choji as a friend. I live alone. I never knew my parents, Naruto said in a small voice. Despite the whisper with which Naruto had conveyed the news, the stillness in the air ensured that all the children had heard him. They couldn't begin to comprehend the life that the blonde-haired boy had had to live. Being alone from such a young age was an alien concept to them, as four out of the five of them lived in huge clan houses surrounded by people, and Sakura lived with her parents. Shikamaru had always described Ino as a troublesome girl, but he was well aware that she was a very astute and kind person, even more so than his chubby friend, when the situation demanded it. Naruto-kun, Shikamaru is right you know. You are quite terrible at throwing shuriken, said Ino in an attempt to change the subject. I'll tell you what. 
Why don't you come over to my place tomorrow sometime after lunch, and I'll have made a full set of cardboard shuriken for you to practice with. That way, next time we play, you can get some people tagged out by yourself, and Kiba can stop pretending he could've won today without his devious tactics and your help, Ino finished throwing a light elbow into the Inuzuka's gut for emphasis. Hey. That was low. Shouted Kiba, earning a chuckle from the collective as a small smile graced Naruto's countenance once again. Alright kids. It's time to head home, shouted Choza from where he stood with his former teammates. The six children stood up, dusted themselves off and started walking towards the adults. Ino-chan. Shika. We are having dinner with the Akimichis today. Sakura-chan, Kiba-kun and Naruto-kun, would you like to join us? Shikaku announced to the group. Naruto-kun, you have to come pick up your groceries anyway. I insist you stay for dinner. No one leaves the Akimichi gates twice without being fed even once, Choza said to Naruto. Yes. Naruto you have to come. My mother got out of the hospital last evening and said we haven't been taking care of ourselves, and so she is cooking a huge meal today. You simply must come for dinner tonight. I won't be taking no for an answer, the younger Akimichi picked up from where his father left. Naruto knew he had no say in the matter, and decided to follow the group towards the Akimichi household. Naruto and Kiba walked side by side towards the Akimichi clan house. Kiba was quite intrigued by the newcomer to their group. He was quite an enigma in his own ways. Kiba was considered fast by his group of friends and even the members of his clan for his age. However, he felt that Naruto had the potential to be even faster than him if he was able to streamline his running action. Naruto, you know you are pretty fast right? When I saw you whoosh past the tree I was hiding when we baited Choji, you look like an orange blur to me. Maybe we can have a race one day to see who is the fastest. Said Kiba. I'd like the Kiba. How about the next time we meet at the park? Naruto told the fear-looking boy. You're on, Naruto. I'm not going to go easy on you though. Maybe Sasu can join us too. That way we can determine who is the fastest in our age, finished Kiba as they entered the Akimichi clan compound. Sasuke. Naruto asked. Sasuke Chia. He is a good guy, but over the last year he hasn't been coming to play a lot. In fact, I can't even remember the last time he came. He is almost as fast as I am, but he can throw the shuriken way better. Shikamaru thinks he is the best all-rounder in our group. Obviously, Shikamaru is wrong. That honor belongs to me, replied Kiba, jerking a thumb towards his puffed-out chest to emphasize the last point of his reply. Entering the expansive Akimichi house, Naruto was shocked to see the flurry of activity in the kitchen that he could spot through the open door. Dinner was a quiet affair for Naruto, barring the few times he dined at Rayman Ichiraku for the late meal. Today however, Naruto was to be treated to a meal and company like nothing he had experienced in his short nine years. Deciding the least he could do was offer some help, Naruto entered the kitchen and walked up to the three ladies who were in charge of feeding today's gathering. Aheyo, Akichimi-san, Yamanaka-san and Nara-san. Would you like some help in the kitchen? Or I could help set up the table if you would like. Offered Naruto, well bound to each of the mentioned women in turn. Naruto had accurately guessed that the large woman was most likely Choji's mother due certain similarities in their features, and the dark-haired woman was more likely to be Shikamaru's mother leaving, by the method of elimination, the regal-looking lady with brown hair to be Ino's mother, though he did expect her to have blonde hair like her daughter and husband as well. Aheyo, Naruto-kun. You're so sweet for offering. We don't need help right now, but we'll call all the kids in when it's time to set up the table. Why don't you join the kids until then? replied Yuuhi Akimichi in response to Naruto's offer. Alright then. Thanks for the invite Akimichi-san, said Naruto as he left the kitchen to join his newly found friends in the central garden of the house. Oh my, if you remove the whiskers he is a splitting image of the Yandame, don't you think? asked Miwanara. I wonder if he will grow up to be as handsome as his father, Suzuki Yamanaka said wistfully. The three women looked at each and burst out into a fit of giggles as they returned to their cooking. Several moments later, the bellowing voice of Choza called for the children to come in and help set up the table. Within minutes, the six adults and six children were seated at the large table, various discussions breaking about through the dinner party. Naruto could honestly say that today was the best day of his life. He had made friends who weren't prejudiced against him for an unknown reason and met adults who seemed to genuinely care for him. As a bonus, the food they had was absolutely delicious. As dinner was finished, the men offered up to clean the table, and so the children headed back to their spot in the garden to talk again. Oh man, I can't wait to start at the academy next year and finally start learning some awesome new jutsu. Right now, my mom refuses to teach Akamaru and me any new jutsu until we train in the basics with more discipline said Kiba, adopting the tone of his mother for the last bit of his comment. Once again, Naruto felt like he was missing some vital information and asked Kiba who Akamaru is. Akamaru is my companion. 
When you are part of the Inuzuka clan, each of us gets a companion dog with which we train and fight. He isn't with me today, as he has to train with the older dogs in the clan. Hopefully, you can see him next time we meet up, replied Kiba. Akachan is just the cutest, Naruto-kun, squealed Sakura. Nothing like his master, added Sakura to tease the Inuzuka in their group. Realization struck Naruto just a short while later. Kiba was joining the academy next year, the same year that Naruto would be joining. Kiba, you are going to be starting at the academy in January too? Asked Naruto. We all are starting next year. You said too, does that mean you will be part of our year at the academy as well Naruto? Shikamaru asked Naruto. Whoa. All of you will be joining. That's great. I am going to be part of the same year as you guys. Yada. Naruto exclaimed. He was ecstatic at the realization that not only would he be able to join the Ninja Academy in a few short weeks, but he would also be joining with a few friends he had made. This was shaping up to be the greatest day ever. As everyone realized they would have a new future classmate in Naruto, they bombarded him with a myriad of questions as they spent the rest of their time at the Akamichi house, learning more about the boy who in turn learned much about his five friends. As the time to leave approached, Naruto had run into the Akamichi household as everyone exchanged goodbyes to grab his groceries before he departed with the Yamanakas. Kiba, Sakura and the Naras headed towards their respective houses while the Yamanakas and Naruto walked together until the Yamanaka clan estate, cutting through the park they had played in earlier in the day to save time. As Naruto bid farewell to the elder Yamanakas, Ino shouted out to Naruto reminding him to come over to the flower shop near the clan house to pick up the practice shuriken. Smiling politely and nodding his assent, Naruto waved a final goodbye to the exuberant Ino as he headed towards his apartment. Naruto walked down the main streets in high spirits. Today had been fantastic, and he owed it all to the kind-hearted Choji. Choji's invitation to the game of ninja at the park had led to his meeting with his future classmates and friends. He would try to return the favor somehow, he owed the boy that much. Naruto reached his apartment without incident and put his groceries away. After finishing his exercises and stretches, he climbed into bed. Naruto pulled out the remedial reading book that the Hokage had provided him and began reading, the words on the book illuminated by the moonlight that streaked through the window above his bed. Eyelids growing heavy from the exhaustive day and the light reading fell into a peaceful doze. But the new set of cardboard shuriken he had received from Ino, Naruto was able to supplement his training program further. However, it seemed that regardless of his best efforts, his aim with the shuriken could simply not improve. Practicing out in the training field, Naruto quickly realized that for an amateur like him, shuriken practice with fragile and lightweight cardboard shuriken was not meant for the outdoors, and so he set up several targets in various parts of his house. Every time Naruto would enter a different room in his house, he would pick up a shuriken and attack one of the targets, Naruto was never once able to hit a target from a distance of 5 feet or more. The new year rolled in alongside a chilly breeze from the northwest, and Naruto had met his five friends regularly since his fateful meeting with them in the park all those days ago. As promised, Naruto had had his race with Kiba. However, he had yet to be introduced to the elusive Sasuke, and so the race was just between the two boys. Kiba had won the race by a significant margin. Despite the fact that it could potentially hurt his position as the fastest in the group, Kiba promised Naruto that he would train the orange-clad boy in a running style to make his own more efficient. This meant Naruto now had two training sessions in speed, one with Kiba out in the park and one in secret in the training ground on the occasions that it was unoccupied. The week before the academy was scheduled to restart for the new academic year, Naruto was summoned to meet the Hokage. After being announced by the receptionist, Makoto-san, Naruto walked in to meet the aging Hokage. Heyo Naruto. Come on in. I have something important to tell you, here is in greeted the young boy. Naruto waved back in greeting, and he plopped himself down into one of the chairs in front of the Hokage's desk. Elbows resting on his thighs and head supported in his palms, Naruto leaned forward in his chair to listen to what the old man had to say. What I have to say today might be hard for you to digest, but know that I only have your best interest at heart. I know it's a belief you have held favorably for a long amount of time, however, you have been thoroughly misled on the matter. To be honest, I take quite the amount of blame concerning this upon myself. I should have told you earlier. I should have had faith in you faith that you are mature enough to handle the truth without going off the rails, Hiruzen told the boy with a poker face so good that Naruto did not have a single idea what was going on. Curious about what the Hokage was about to divulge, Naruto leaned forward. This was important news, and he did not want to miss a word of it. Naruto, continued the Hokage, orange just isn't your color. Naruto almost fell off his chair only to catch himself before he managed to embarrass himself. What? Are you kidding me old man? I thought this was something important. Hokage Jiji, you got me so curious, and for what? For wearing orange. Shouted Naruto pointing an accusatory finger at the Hokage. 
The Hokage laughed boisterously and eventually calmed down, wheezing to a stop. It's about time I got one on you. With all your damn pranks, I sure as hell can afford myself this luxury. Naruto had nothing to say in response as the Hokage had made a good point. Deciding it was time to change the subject, Naruto sputtered a response. I am sure you didn't call me in just to make fun of my fashion sense, Hokage Jiji. Well I called you in to discuss something that is quite pertinent to your choice of attire. As Konoha has quite a few shinobi of its own, I am sure you have seen at least a few of them, Hiruzen told the boy with a serious expression on his face. Hiruzen continued with his point after seeing Naruto nod in confirmation. Have you ever seen a shinobi in such a bright color before? I once know. No, I haven't, replied Naruto, understanding the true reason the Hokage had summoned him this morning. My ninja are required to go on several dangerous missions. While I cannot explicitly tell them what to wear, I would rest easy when I know that they are taking every precaution to finish the mission as safely as possible. Some missions require shinobi to sneak into foreign countries. Can you imagine how long a bright orange-clad ninja would last on the barren terrain of Iowa? Here is unfinished, letting his point sink in. Well you won't be going on any missions until after you graduate and are unlikely to leave the country for months even after that, I strongly believe you should start consider this an aspect of your new shinobi life. I see your point. I do. The problem is, well, I can't quite afford anything else. Even if it's just Ninja Academy and I won't be doing anything scary, I would like to dress like a ninja, but I can only change my wardrobe when I pick up some ninja missions and get paid for them, said Naruto, acutely aware that in his current state of dress, he would not make it very far in Iowa at all. Well, that's because you haven't factored in a couple of things. Since you are going to be a student at the Ninja Academy, you will need quite a few supplies on a more regular basis, and so I plan to increase your monthly allowance until the time you graduate from the Academy. Also, I have been slightly late to give you this, but I do believe I owe you a New Year's gift, Hiruzen told the boy with a sparkle in his eye. The amount he had decided to give Naruto should cover all his basic requirements, and then some. As Hiruzen pushed out a red envelope towards the him, Naruto could only look down at the floor trying his hardest not to let the tears fall. The old man had been the nicest person to him, and he was now going out of his way to help him further. Determined not to let the tears that threaded to fall be seen, Naruto took the envelope from the Hokage, bowed low and yelled in proclamation, I am going to be your best ninja Hokage-sama. Turning around without notice, Naruto ran out of the office and into his apartment without pause. A week later, Naruto headed out to begin his life as a student at the Ninja Academy. Naruto had decided to outfit himself in a deep red t-shirt and a pair of black shorts. Naruto had decided not to spend all the money he received at once, saving some of the money for a rainy day. He would need to replace the clothing as he grew. In addition, Naruto had purchased a pair of black ninja sandals that were recommended to him by one of the clerks at the store, as the footwear that was previously on his feet looked worn down past the soles. Excited at the prospect of officially starting on his path towards being a ninja, Naruto reached the academy well in advance of the opening hour. He spotted only one other person on the academy grounds, a boy with black hair and equally dark eyes with a blue t-shirt and a pair of white shorts. Naruto had never seen the boy before and considering his age, Naruto found it peculiar, as he had met and seen a lot of people since he joined his friends at the park regularly. As the minutes passed by, Naruto noticed that the slow trickle of people who had come into the academy grounds had accumulated to form a throng of people that started at the gates and continued into well into the training field, situated behind a few of the buildings. From within this group, Ino and her parents had spotted Naruto in his lonesome and decided to keep him company until it was time to start classes. The Heyo Naruto-kun, Ino called out as she darted towards the blonde boy. Taking an appraising step back after hugging the boy, she said, I honestly cannot complain about the lack of light reflecting from your body. You look much better in this. By this time, Inachi and Suzuki had joined the children, and the four of them made polite small talk to pass the time. Soon, Kiba and Akimaru, Sakura and her mother, Choji and his parents and Shikamaru and his mother, had joined in the group. As the nerves abated, conversation quickly picked up an excited tone about the immediate future of the children in the group, with the two clan heads contributing stories from their own days at the academy. As the bell rang signifying it was time for the children to enter their classrooms, the children split from the adults after their respective goodbyes and headed for the large building that housed their classrooms. As Naruto and his friends seated himself amongst the numerous other students in his class, he realized that the raven-haired boy he had spotted earlier was a member of their class as well. Naruto lazily let his eyes roam across the classroom, and he soon spotted Ino and Sakura sitting by each other a row ahead on the other side of the classroom. As he did not recognize anyone else from his seat, as he was sitting with Kiba, Shikamaru and Choji in the row of benches furthest from the writing board, he quickly followed Shikamaru's lead and rested his head on the table. 
Choji, he noticed, was trying to make conversation with a black-haired boy from before, while Kiba was talking to a spiky-haired boy who wore dark glasses. So I will stop here guys. That's it for today. Hope you all enjoyed this video if you do please leave a like share and subscribe, also don't forget to check it out author of this fanfic link in channel about her description, also thanks for watching guys, love you all.